So thank you for joining us for our sports chiropractic information session. Tonight we have with us Dr. Jude Miller. Dr. Jude Miller is an advanced practice clinician where he serves as a full-time on-site chiropractic physician for the University of Memphis sports teams. The partnership began in August 2018 to provide high-quality evidence-based musculoskeletal care for the University of Memphis athletic teams. He also manages and implements training for Logan University Chiropractic Sports Medicine Residency Program, as well as serving as a clini clinical rotation site for chiropractic interns and teaches online for the Doctor of Chiropractic Program. Dr. Miller attended undergrad at the University of Tennessee at Martin, graduating in 2007 with a bachelor's in health and human performance with a concentration in exercise science. He attended Logan University where he graduated in 2009 with a bachelor's in life sciences and 2011 with a master's in sports science and rehabilitation and a doctor of chiropractic degree. He became a board certified chiropractic sports physician in 2013 from the American Board of Chiropractic Sports Physicians and also holds an international certificate in sports chiropractic from the Federation Internationale de Chiropractic du Sport. During his time in East Tennessee, he owned Active Family and Sports <laughs> Chiropractic and co-owned Knoxville Health and Performance. Dr. Miller served as the chiropractic team physician for Rowan State Community College for seven years, overseeing and managing injuries, needing conservative non-invasive treatment. He also served as adjunct faculty where he taught courses in care and prevention of athletic injuries, principles of nutrition, lifetime wellness, CPR, AED, and first aid, personal training, and anatomy and physiology. Dr. Miller's clinical training included the St. Louis VA Medical Centers, Spinal Cord Injury Unit, Chiropractic Department, and the Interdisciplinary Pain Management Department. He also participated in OR and clinical rotations through departments of neurology, orthopedics, general surgery, radiology, vascular surgery, interventional radiology, and interventional pain management. He completed internships at Montgomery Health Center, Biofree Sports and Rehab Center, rotations including University of Missouri, Lindenwood University, Missouri Baptist University, St. Louis Youth Soccer Association, and St. Louis High Schools, Star Physical Therapy, and Rowan State Community College Athletics Department. Dr. Miller. Thank you for the intro. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about chiropractic sports medicine. Uh, I'll give you guys a little bit of a background about my journey to where I am now uh, and what it takes to get involved in chiropractic sports medicine. So if you have questions as you go along, uh, feel free to ask them. You can either ask them, unmute and ask, or you can ask in the uh, chat feature. Uh, so. Got a couple of slides we're going to go through here, uh, but we're going to set the, the stage here. We're going to get a, a good intro video going. Let me get it to share. All right, here we go. share my presentation to share again. 
So that was the intro for the uh, Memphis football team, uh, which I have the pleasure of working with, as well as uh, 19 teams across the university. So the journey to becoming a sports chiropractor, uh, it can be very exciting uh, to be involved with teams that are winning, uh, but success as far as a sports chiropractor is concerned is not always just about winning or losing. Uh, it's about how we get involved in the game, how we play the game. Uh, and we need to remember that our, our success in a profession doesn't happen overnight. Uh, so talk a little bit about success. When we look at people who are successful or in different roles, we, we tend to see what stands out. We see what they're doing currently. Uh, but a lot of times we take for granted what went into getting them to that level. So there's no cookie cutter recipe on what will make you a successful chiropractor or a sports chiropractor. Uh, it's built on your experiences and what you've, you've uh, sort of gone through. So we have a lot of hard work. Uh, there's always a lot of failures. No one is a success every time. So we, we build on our failures. We learn from our mistakes. We put in a lot of hard work, late nights, sacrifice, uh, but we have to keep at it. Uh, so we, we need to remember that success is really where preparation and opportunity meets. Uh, you have to be prepared for those opportunities when they come along. Uh, as you're going through chiropractic school, you won't immediately come out of school and have this once in a lifetime opportunity. Hopefully you do. Uh, but a lot of times it takes work. There, there's a lot of sacrifice that goes in uh, as we're going through school uh, and as we go into uh, practice itself. So step one in becoming a successful sports chiropractor, uh, I really feel that developing yourself as a diagnostician, so you need to have strong skills of being able to make a diagnosis, figure out what's wrong. Is it a spinal complaint? Is it an extremity complaint? Uh, we need to have pretty vast skill sets when it comes to ex examination. Uh, so that starts with being a focused uh, student. Whether you're an undergrad or you've started the chiropractic program already, we need to really take in what we're learning. Sometimes we take a class and we don't really see where that's going to be applied immediately. But the further into the program you get, the more you understand those early uh, techniques and basic sciences and clinical sciences really do play a big role in what type of clinician you'll be, uh, understanding what effect hormones have on the body, uh, what effect the neurology of the body has. Uh, we, we come across so many things in our education at Logan uh, that we really need to take them in as we're going. You need to be a lifelong learner. So being successful as a sports chiropractor, like I said, it, it doesn't necessarily happen as soon as you graduate. Uh, every year I take more and more continuing educations and I try to broaden my horizon on, on what I know. Uh, and I feel like the longer I've been in practice, the more I realize what I don't know. Uh, and so always striving to learn more. So becoming a successful diagnostician involves mastering taking a, an accurate history, uh, being an active listener, uh, mastering the physical examination. So yeah, it's nice to be able to order the testing, which we also need to understand when and why and what to order, but chiropractic, medicine, physical therapy, all of these professions involve history and physical examination. So we lay hands on a patient and move them through ranges of motions or challenge your body in different ways to come up with our differential diagnosis and really hone in on what we should be doing or what maybe we shouldn't be doing. And sometimes we need additional testing. So we need to understand when is it appropriate to get an x-ray or do we need an MRI? And what are we looking for in the MRI? Let's say we have someone who has a painful popping, clicking shoulder and they aren't getting better with our conservative care. Our next step may be a MR arthrogram. So what are the indications of that? What is the contraindications and what do the results mean? Uh, so these are all steps we need to take in becoming a successful chiropractor and really 
embracing our role as a diagnostician. Next, we need to fill our toolbox. Uh, so what makes us successful in the field is not one specific item. Uh, it's not that you're a great adjuster and it's not that you are a really good needler. Uh, you need to have a diverse skill set, uh, learn different manual adjusting uh, practices. And that's one of the great things about Logan is you get a lot of exposure to different adjusting techniques. Uh, you get exposure to soft tissue modalities, whether it's cupping or instrument assisted soft tissue work uh, or nerve flossing or a number of different things. Uh, needling and acupuncture. Acupuncture is an elective in uh, Logan's chiropractic program. Uh, so while you're going to school, you can learn acupuncture and when and why to apply it. You learn a lot about different physical modalities, whether it's ultrasound or uh, electrotherapy or laser or shockwave therapy. There's all different types of modalities that are used in general practice. And I feel that there's even more when it comes to sports because sports practices tend to embrace cutting edge things. So we always have to be on top of what is new coming out, how is it used and how can we sort of modify uh, our practice type based off of what's available need to be knowledgeable about nutrition and the list of tools you can you can learn throughout school and after school is endless but we should always be taking in more things because you never know when you'll have a patient who may need one specific skill set uh, and we shouldn't try to make those patients all fit the, the square peg. Uh, if they're a different shape we need to, to know what tools we can use to help that patient. Knowing your role in a team environment, this is huge, especially when it comes to integrative care and care as a, in a sports chiropractic setting. And I'm going to talk a little bit more here in the next few slides about uh, the sports medicine setting and what specifically is my role uh, when it comes to the University of Memphis uh, and Logan University and what our, who our team is made up of and what different providers play a role in that. And then one of the biggest skills uh, you can learn to become successful as a chiropractor or a sports chiropractor are the soft skills. Uh, and these are things that you refine over time. And I don't think there's one class you can take or one seminar or, or one thing that makes you better at soft skills. It, it takes time. So our soft skills are our ability to communicate both verbally and written. Uh, you have to be self-motivated. Uh, I can tell you my day as a sports chiropractor varies in length. Some days I start seeing people at 5 a.m. We may be traveling uh, for an away game and our treatments start at five in the morning. And that day may go on till nine or 10 at night. So you have to be motivated. You have to go out and find more things. You have to embrace uh, leadership and take responsibility. Uh, on the previous slide, we talked about our role in in a team and there's definitely teamwork when it comes to working in a sports environment. Uh, and all of these other skills you see under there are time management, decisiveness, flexibility. Uh, I'll give you a great example of flexibility when it comes to sports chiropractic. Uh, we would all like to have like our adjusting table with us or our other supplies, but sometimes that doesn't happen. And I can remember an away game year before last where we, I had packed up all my stuff. It was supposed to be loaded onto the semi truck to meet us at the away game. And we get there and none of my equipment had made it onto the semi. Uh, and so I was faced with having to treat 20 to 30 people the night before a game and another 20 to 30 the, the morning of a game without a table or without equipment. So we have to be able to flex, to be flexible and improvise uh, working in those, those types of situations. And that situation turned out good. Uh, I utilized uh, different things to adjust on and sort of adapted based on uh, what I did have. So as you're going through the education process and 
after you get through school at Logan and go out into practice, you have to realize that a lot of us fall into comfort zones. And these comfort zones are typically beautiful places, uh, but nothing grows there. So if what you're doing, you are so comfortable and it's so easy, then, then you're really not pushing yourself to expand uh, your horizon and what you can do. So don't become compliant with just because uh, you're making it through school easy and you can pass the classes. Look for more challenges, incorporate additional electives or learn new techniques or go shadow. Uh, you should always put yourself in those environments where, hey, this person knows more than I do, or this is a skill set I haven't been exposed to, to, to push yourself and grow yourself both as a person uh, and a clinician. So a little bit about my journey. Uh, I did my undergrad degree in exercise science, and I wasn't sure what I wanted to do in life. Uh, so I knew I wanted to do something in the medical field. Uh, I shadowed chiropractors and I shadowed physical therapists and occupational therapists uh, and uh, MDs who practice just straight medicine. I shadowed surgeons and I looked for what was good in those professions and what I didn't like, how much of a work-life commitment they had uh, and what they were able to do. And what I found was at the chiropractors I shadowed really enjoyed what they did for a living. Uh, they made good money. Uh, most of our patients almost all the time aren't going to die on us. So our patient base is very flexible in the fact that like, if you want to have a family uh, and your kids have hockey practice or martial arts practice, uh, you can change around your schedule and go to those things without really inconveniencing the, your whole practice. So my experience at different chiropractors offices was great compared to a lot of the other professions. I had a lot of friends whose parents were medical doctors and orthopedists. And so shadowing them, I 100% love what they do. Uh, and I think they help patients, but oftentimes I feel they're married to their job and they, they don't get that work-life balance. Uh, and what stood out to me being a chiropractor versus a physical therapist or an occupational therapist at that time. Uh, and I think it's still true in almost all the states, those other professions aren't allowed to make diagnoses. They don't, the physical therapy and occupational therapy, they don't really function as a primary care physician. So my scope here in Tennessee is a primary care portal of entry physician. And what I enjoy about my job is when people come in, I'm I'm able to work up what they, they have going on and make a diagnosis. So after graduating undergrad, I decided to go to Logan, applied, made it in, uh, and it was hard. Uh, classes like in undergrad, I, I took a, a heavy class load to start out with, but at Logan, you take a whole lot of classes. Uh, and it's like drinking from from a fire hose. There's a lot of information coming at you that you have to synthesize and apply uh, to what's going on. Uh, and so initially it was, it was a hard transition. There was a lot of work, uh, but as I started to focus in on what I was doing at Logan and really set my sights on what my long-term goals were, uh, it became easier and I, I could apply the information to different aspects of what I, what I wanted to be. Uh, so I decided to diversify my experience while I was at Logan. Uh, I also enrolled in the uh, Master's of Sports Science and Rehabilitation degree. Uh, and so I took those classes in the evening towards the second half of my chiropractic curriculum. Uh, and that allowed, sort of opened additional doors. Uh, it opened me up to learning even more rehab practices, uh, and my long-term goal in, in addition to practicing was to uh, teach as well and having a master's degree helped to expand that. I tried to diversify my clinical experiences. Uh, so I took care of a lot of different sports teams while I was at Logan. Uh, I tried to be involved in a lot of clubs, uh, different activities. I got to do a rotation at the VA where I saw people in the hospital who were inpatients and outpatients. I got to manage acute care situations, chronic pain, uh, 
And then after graduating Logan, I went into private practice. So I met my wife while I was at Logan. Uh, she's also a chiropractor and we opened up a practice together. So we practiced uh, in private practice for seven or eight years. Uh, we ran two successful practices. One was insurance-based and one was cash-based. Uh, took care of athletes the whole time and I, I taught on the side while I did that. Uh, and then in 2018, an opportunity came along for me to become the uh, part of uh, sports medicine staff here at the University of Memphis full time. Uh, so that's what I do now. I, I work for Logan and I am full time at the University of Memphis, uh, where I take care of all of their athletic teams. Uh, so I primarily travel with football. Uh, we do some travel with track and field as well. And then we're open to travel with uh, the other teams. We cover home events. Uh, it's a pretty diverse experience. I generally have uh, somewhere between four and six chiropractic interns with me at a time. And while they're with me, they get lots of hands-on time exposure to uh, different treatment modalities, how to manage patients, uh, working in different environments, traveling with teams. Uh, it's a really good environment to work in and you get exposed to a lot of uh, a lot of cool things so University of Memphis Logan University uh, it's it's really this group and team environment so here are some pictures of different interns and residents and fellows I've had uh, throughout the last couple of years and different experiences they've had we've covered the national indoor, uh, track competitions. We got to go to the, I got to take two students with me to the Cotton Bowl in Dallas uh, two years ago now. Uh, and that was a great experience. They got the whole nine yards. They were with, with the team for the whole week we were out there. They got to partake in all the events. They got to be right on the sidelines. Uh, there's just a lot of exposure. Uh, we get to work with different uh, professions. Uh, while we're there. And that's that's sort of what this next slide is going to talk about. So the team I work with is pretty diverse. We have, I believe, 56 different subspecialties uh, that work with the University of Memphis. So we have a sports medicine athletic director who's sort of the hub of the, the wheel. Uh, and then we have all of these other departments that branch off of it. So we have orthopedic services, internal medicine, we have student athlete wellness, we have physical therapy department, the chiropractic department, uh, and then all of these other sports. And then off of the orthopedic director, you have multiple subspecialties and team physicians that fall into that. Uh, we have a neurosurgical group that we consult with uh, and prior to COVID, we would go once a week to a neurosurgical conference uh, to discuss cases that were in the hospital and evaluations and, and learn alongside the neurosurgeons. We also have an internal medicine uh, director who is over a number of different subspecialties, everything from dermatology to cardiology, uh, you name it, they're involved and we have a, a specialist. So my role on the team is very unique and I have to understand the role of the other providers in the group uh, in order to work appropriately and make sure we're taking care of the athletes. So what exactly is my role? Well, first off, a big part of my role is to serve as education for chiropractic interns, residents, and fellows as they come through. So I need to be up to date on the skills that are available uh, and how to communicate that effectively with students and allow them to develop their own skill set. That way, when they're done at Logan and they graduate, they go out into practice being very prepared and, and have had a lot of hands on clinical experiences. Uh, we're definitely there to help treat and take care of the athletes, uh, whether it's at an event or just at uh, the University of Memphis itself. Other services we offer is diagnostic ultrasound. So I, I got the, the pleasure of learning how to perform diagnostic musculoskeletal ultrasound at Logan. Uh, and I've been doing that for about two years now and my skill sets continue to in, increase. Uh, so we're able to evaluate acute and chronic injuries 
uh, and actually take a look inside the body and say, hey, this is what's going on. Or maybe someone comes off the field because they think they've pulled their hamstring and I can physically look inside of their body with the ultrasound and say, there's nothing torn or there's just inflammation. Or maybe you have a, a big tear. Maybe you have like a, a high grade two tear. Uh, and that helps us to manage uh, where you're going to go and what's going to happen next and how we should develop your rehab plan. Uh, and then there's always the just having fun. Uh, so we get a lot of cool toys. Uh, we recently built out a new uh, football indoor practice facility and football uh, training room. Uh, so this picture was taken then uh, as we were getting some new equipment. So of course we have to try out all the equipment uh, and see how it works and interacting with everyone. So having, having fun is a big part of the job too. So where is sports chiropractic and where is it going? Uh, well, chiropractic is involved in all levels of sports currently. We take care of weekend warriors. We take care of high school athletes, college athletes, uh, the do games and other extreme sports, chiropractors are there. Uh, we cover professional sports, Olympic and international sports. Uh, so we're involved with most of the professional sporting organizations in the US. Uh, so for example, every NFL team has a team chiropractor and part of their medical hierarchy is that a chiropractor is always affiliated with those teams. And typically there's at least one chiropractor on the sidelines for each team at every game. Uh, USA uh, track and field, NHL, the NBA, the Olympics, uh, the world games, it was supposed to be 2021. Uh, it looks like it'll still happen here in Birmingham. So we'll have a gigantic uh, international event happening just a few hours away from Memphis. Uh, and so chiropractic is involved in sports across the board. And how do you develop yourself and learn more about being a sports chiropractor? Well, it's, it's getting involved with different organizations, uh, shadowing people. Uh, we have the American sports, the Amer ACA, uh, the Sports Chiropractic Council. So you can become a member of that as a student uh, and as a practicing doctor. Uh, you can become a member of the American Chiropractic Board of uh, sports physicians, chiropractic sports physicians, uh, and they they are the only recognized body to give uh, the specialization of a certified chiropractic sports physician. So that is a certification that's recognized both in the U.S. Uh, and abroad as well. Uh, and you really need some of those certifications in order to work at these higher levels. And then we have the counterpart to that is FIX, uh, the International Federation of Sports Chiropractic, and they have their own certification, which is an ICSC. Uh, and essentially it's a counterpart to the ACB, uh, ACBSP's certifications to take care of international uh, sporting events. So, I feel that Logan was an excellent choice for me. Uh, other things that are available through Logan that really helped to prepare me. I did a bachelor's degree outside in health and human performance and exercise science. While I was at Logan, I also did the, the life science bachelor's. I did a master's in sports science and rehabilitation, but Logan now offers a number of different master degrees. So we have the sports science and rehab. Uh, we have nutrition and human performance, applied nutrition and dietetics. We're just rolling out a master's degree in athletic training, and we have another one in health informatics. Uh, so you can really set yourself apart, not only with the DC program, but with the master's program as well. Uh, and if you're interested in educating other healthcare professionals, there's also the Doctor of Health Professions Education uh, available at Logan. So I don't want to talk too long. I want to open it up to questions for you guys and see if there's anything specific you'd like me to answer or talk about. And feel free to either post them your questions in the chat or you can unmute and we can just talk about it. I have a quick question, if you don't mind. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so I was just wondering what kind of you, like how, how you came to get involved in sports, um, not necessarily just as a, like a chiropractor within sports, but just being able to be involved with like the University of Memphis's. Uh... Yeah, so how I got involved with those things, I, I, I think there was just connections I had made over time. So when I came out of school, I had to do an internship uh, for my master's degree. Uh, and so I did the in, my internship at a physical therapy clinic that was associated with uh, the college I worked with in uh, East Tennessee. Uh, and by doing that internship, I got to know the other providers on the sports team, uh, and it sort of transitioned into uh, a working relationship where I'd come on campus and treat people and they'd send people out. Uh, and I did that for a long time, and I, I feel that I had pretty good success with that. Uh, and then really the, the Memphis uh, obligation or the Memphis opportunity uh, came about uh, the University of Memphis's sports medicine department heard of what Logan was doing with the University of Missouri. Uh, and so essentially we have a similar program at Mizzou uh, and the University of Memphis was very interested in that. So they contacted Logan uh, and uh, Logan reached out to me to see if I would be interested in taking on a full-time position. Uh, so I, I had developed the skill sets both through practice and uh, uh, teaching that really made it possible for me to step into this this position. Uh, did that answer your, your question, Grant? Yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right. Let's see here. Uh, we have another question in the chat that is, is it difficult to get to work in the Olympics? Uh, it's not super straightforward. So there are different avenues that you can work with the Olympics. Uh, there's an Olympic village, uh, and typically each team brings their own medical staff. So up until last year, there was a chiropractor that was the head of, uh, he was the chief medical officer for the Olympics. So he was over all the MDs, all the healthcare providers and coordinated care. Uh, so his role was pretty vast. Uh, the Olympic training centers offer uh, rotating internships with them. That is a two week immersion internship where after you've been practicing so long, you can apply for it. If you're selected, you go to an Olympic training center and you become part of that sports medicine team uh, and you take care of those athletes. Working with the Olympics, like traveling with it, some of the teams, like there's a specific provider, a chiropractor for the US bobsled team. Uh, there's a specific chiropractic provider for uh, the U.S. Olympic track team. Uh, and so some of the individual teams through connections those providers build uh, have a chiropractor that will travel with them. But there's also an application process you can go through. Uh, typically, you have to have some experience working with sports, uh, the background, certain techniques you have to learn. They usually look for certifications like your CCSP or the international certification uh, and you apply and you become part of the, the uh, medical staff for the Olympics. So you are open to treat any uh, Olympic athlete uh, on the US team and essentially you are just part of that, that team. So it's, it's a really unique uh, experience to have and we actually have a couple of different staff members with Logan uh, that have worked with different Olympic teams and have done the Olympic Training Center rotation. All right. So I have a question from Zach. Where do you see sports chiropractic profession in five to 10 years from now? So that's a great question. Uh, I do feel that sports chiropractic is evolving. Uh, as a profession, I think the utilization of diagnostic ultrasound will become a have to have feature in successful sports chiropractic practices, just because the amount of soft tissue injuries we 
have to evaluate and treat is pretty high. Uh, and what's nice about diagnostic ultrasound is it's low cost. There's no radiation or danger of doing the examination. Uh, and you get a lot of information out of it. And you can use it as an objective tool to sort of grade people's progress uh, as you try different interventions. Uh, other things I think that are evolving in sports chiropractic over the next five to 10 years, uh, some of our national organizations are looking at pushing for higher reimbursement uh, if you have certain certifications. So currently uh, there's another board certification you can get in chiropractic, which is a chiropractic neurologist. Uh, and they get a higher reimbursement from in insurance companies. Uh, so the sports uh, board certification is looking at negotiating that across the board. Uh, other things that I think are changing in sports chiropractic, it's, it's becoming more open and you see more schools uh, that want to have a chiropractor either affiliated with them or on staff full time. Uh, I think eventually you'll see more sports chiropractors also get a uh, advanced EMT or paramedic certification because that broadens our scope when it comes to care, care for athletes on the sidelines. Uh, it, it allows us to help administer medications if need be, IVs, uh, and more acute management of the more serious end of injuries. So I, I think in five or 10 years, you'll see a big push uh, for people to become certified using diagnostic ultrasound, probably getting some sort of advanced certification in EMT or paramedic. Uh, and I mean, even now there are a lot of high schools, uh, community colleges, those types of things that utilize chiropractors. So I, I just think the, the field is growing quickly. All right, so have another question. How do you choose the four students for the internship? Uh, so, and how do you better your chances? Uh, well, the internship is open for trimester nine and trimester 10 students. So essentially it's the last eight months uh, that you're in the curriculum at Logan. Uh, things I look for, I look for students who have gone above and beyond what's just available, what everyone has to take. So I, I look to see if you've been involved with other organizations. Maybe you're involved with SACA, which is the Student American Chiropractic Association, or maybe you're involved with MPI or just different things to show that you're involved in more than just what you have to take. Uh, I like students to have some exposure to different rehab uh, or a desire to learn more about that. I have a high preference for students to have already taken either a dry needling course or taken a uh, trimester of acupuncture. Uh, we do perform a lot of needling uh, on our athletes. So having the ability of having all of our students uh, giving the same or similar care is important. Uh, typically there's an application process. Prior to COVID, uh, I was able to have students come out and shadow ahead of time. So we'd have trimester one students and up that would come down for a day or two uh, and they'd get some exposure and see what's going on. That's really been restricted more uh, with uh, division one athletics. There's a lot of COVID testing that we all have to go through. So typically we get tested two to three times a week, every week, because we're around so many people and what we do. Uh, so it's harder to bring in outside students. Although I, I do schedule Zoom sessions with people uh, to discuss where they're at and what their goals are and what they'd like to learn about uh, in the rotation. So I, I think ways to improve your chances of getting selected, get involved with different organizations on campus, do seminars through Logan's postgrad or outside seminars. Don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, to ask questions. Uh, and 
the the needling is is a bonus. All right. Any other questions? Oh, where do you draw the line with athletic trainers, or who treats what injuries? Soft tissue work. That is an excellent question. So our full time staff is. I think we have thirteen athletic trainers right now. Myself. So I'm on campus full time, five to seven days a week. We have four chiropractic students. We have a physical therapist that is full time as well. So those are the people that are there every day. Uh, we have orthopedists, uh, non-surgical sports medicine and primary care that are there weekly. Uh, so we see a variety of injuries and our, our how we work with the athletic trainers is, is pretty open compared to some other schools. So uh, typically we will give second opinions on injuries. We may do entire rehab processes uh, for different injuries. So we'll start them all the way from the acute phase and work them to return of play. Uh, some of the stuff we perform more of uh, the adjustments and the needling and maybe some neuromuscular re-education. And then we tag team with the athletic trainer who may spend more one-on-one -on -one time with them doing uh, the rehab process. Uh, so it really varies from sport and trainer to trainer. Uh, typically our physical therapist primarily manages a lot of post-surgical patients. So she sees people directly after surgery. We may co-manage with her some uh, if there's manipulation or adjustment or other things that that person needs. Uh, we'll do that while she's doing the physical therapy. And as they come closer to return to play, she hands that person off to the athletic trainer who will do daily work with them. And then we, we supplement, supplement in sometimes with just managing conditions or helping to manage symptoms or just even wellness care. So it's, it's sort of a, a gray area and it varies team to team and trainer to trainer on how much we do with different sports and what the athletic trainer does and what we do. Uh, and really it's just a commun communication thing. When we have athletes that come to us for an evaluation, I always make it a point to touch base with their athletic trainer so they know what's going on and vice versa. All right. Any other questions? Well, if that's it, uh, I don't know, Stephanie, do you have anything else? Uh, I don't have to the, I think you covered everything. And if nobody has, oh, yep. got yeah. a new one. What elective do you recommend taking during um, the chiropractic, during the elective time period? So I believe electives start at try six. So you have the opportunity to take a lot of different electives. Uh, and that's really a hard question to answer because I think some of the electives you should take are really based on your personal experiences and what you want to focus on. Like you can be a sports chiropractor and be very good at, let's say like SOT, which is typically a much lighter force technique than diversified. Uh, so there's, there's no real good or bad. It, it should be something that sort of resonates with you uh, and that you feel you're going to implement. Uh, things I've found valuable uh, taking as electives, I took flexion distraction, Cox technique, uh, Thompson, uh, and I use that some in, in practice now with athletes, uh, but it, it definitely exposed me to different things. I've taken McKenzie technique. Uh, I think that's great a great system because it helps you to recognize patterns uh, and sort of group people into different groups for treatment. Uh, I've done taping courses and needling. So that's just the what elective to take could be 
hard to like pin down. It's, it's really like what you want to get out of it because at the end of the day, when you graduate, you, you have to develop your toolbox of skills and it's going to be different for everyone. And there's, I don't think when you look at sports chiropractors across the board who work with college level and professional and international athletes, I don't think there's one particular skill uh, it's that they've really diversified uh, their knowledge base. So they're able to treat and manage a lot of different things. All right. Well, I'm going to put my, I meant to have a slide that had my contact information in there. Email is probably the best way to get a hold of me, uh, Jude period Miller at logan.edu. Uh, so if you have questions or uh, maybe you're in an area and you're looking to shadow with someone, I, I can definitely try to help you arrange those opportunities so you can get some experience. Uh, but I enjoyed talking with you all and thanks. Thank you, Dr. Miller.